Happy Tuesday, all. Kristen here with the Tuesday tip, or this one we might put in the category of more of just kind of something to think about. We're having a thought. So I had the incredible opportunity to participate in a Making Sense of Science facilitators training. Woo woo. So super exciting for that. I'll put a link down below to out to them. Great folks. And we were diving in and thinking about density. And what are different ways that we can explore the concept of density through a variety of different mediums? And one of the super cool things that we did was we recorded the mass and volume for different objects as a way to get at the density, right? Density is mass divided by volume. So we recorded that for actual objects and then we plotted our data. Oh man, it's not working. Okay, there it is. No. We plotted our data out and right we've got mass divided by the volume and we can get our slope is the relationship of density and I can't get my fingers to go in the right way. And I had this moment of sitting there being like, oh, this is so powerful. We can like see using data how this concept fits together. And then I found myself sitting there and being like, would this actually help? If you are someone who is struggling to wrap your head around that fact that like a slope gives us a sense of the proportion and you've learned ratios maybe you've even learned rise over run maybe you've even learned y equals mx plus b in this equation we actually are calculating a number for our slope right that totally makes sense but then i sat there and i took a step back and i was like well cognitively what are the steps our learners have to go through to make sense of this. They need to understand that mass can vary, variation. They need to understand that volume can vary. They need to understand that then when those two things, what those two things are for a particular object, that the relationship between them gives us another characteristic or another attribute of that object. Not another attribute that would necessarily like maybe show up in our data table, but by combining those two together, we can learn more about that object, that that dot on the graph isn't just a random dot, but that it's that relationship. And then I had this, oh man, that's the representational nature of all bivariate data, helping our students understand that. That is step one. And then we're trying to get them to see connecting all of those relationships between the individual data points as they might string together in a line and get them to realize that by looking across all those data points by that aggregate thinking, we can then make a generalization and inference about all objects. When we see that there is a relationship, a consistent relationship between those two. And then we add in this extra layer that density varies by objects. So we've cognitively have so many things going on. And I just had this moment of stepping back of being like, when we execute rise over run and calculate a value for slope, do we necessarily cognitively understand what that means in terms of the difference of our X and the difference of our Y? When we calculate, when we get Google Sheets to give us that output of the linear relationship, does that mean we fully comprehend what that is telling us in terms of what we can make sense of? And I think the answer is varied. I think for those of us that have looked at lots of data, the answer I would hope is absolutely yes. But what is it that helps our students get there? Is it just executing the math task of calculating rise over run or getting Google Sheets to give us that output of y equals mx plus b for our linear relationship? Or do we need to dive a little bit deeper to make sure our students have that strong conceptual understanding of what it really means to look at two variables with one another? So the tip is to pause and do that gut check and say, are my students just executing an equation or an algorithm and they're going through the motions or are they actually understanding more deeply what that means what that can tell us about our data so not as much alike we can take it right into our classrooms but hopefully a little bit of a like oh wait let me just pause and do a quick check of like what did i do last week what's coming up this week am i 
pushing on the execution because of time? Or am I like, are they actually getting it at a deeper level, which is what we need them to get to so that they can apply it going forward? So we don't have to handhold them all the time. Okay, so this was a long one and it was, you know, a little bit more of a money tip, but hopefully it is food for thought for you to think about. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say and how it's resonating and how you are making sure your students understand this gnarly thing of what does that line actually tell us and help us see from our data. Bye.